Hola, good morning to you. Welcome back to Clear Vision. My name's Simon and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. I'm not under my tree still, still recovering from my operation, but I am fine. But I'm looking forward to getting back out there and having a, a really nice backdrop of the mountain. Um, <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about narcissistic parents. But to start with, I'm going to look at a narcissistic parent and the long-term effects of having a parent who is a narcissist um, and the forms of narcissistic abuse that a parent can give bestow upon a child if bestow is the right word the, the thing you need to remember is narcissists will get rid of any perceived threat to their very very delicate sense of self including narcissistic parents being a parent does not change someone who is developed as a narcissist um, and children will react to a narcissistic parent in many, many different ways. None of them are healthy and the bulk of them rely on or succeed on um, uh, sacrificing, developing, um, self-developing individuality. Those who develop individuality will be ostracized, persecuted, pushed out, estranged, etc, etc by that parent um, and then we'll have to deal with the fallout of all of that as well so two ways to um, two routes in which um, you your actions will uh, trigger narcissistic abuse not saying that you are responsible but this is these are the catalysts for um, the narcissist coming forward towards you so the first one will be that you are perceived as a direct threat you are a, you there is something you are doing which is a perceived and probably is a direct attack on their sense of self so a child uh, objects to the way that they're being treated um, by the parent maybe vocalizes that maybe actually even criticizes the parent in some way so there's the parent perceives an, an act of defiance an act of disloyalty um, an act of betrayal, something like that, uh, coming from the child. And this can be, uh, you know, oh, I had a really good time with my other parent or another family member. They're more fun than you. Um, all of these things. Now, for many parents, they, we all get to experience, many of us get to experience these kind of comments from a child and defiance and the child trying to find who they are and establish their own self in their own right and while sometimes that can be quite a painful process both ways and you know there can be some things that are said that are quite hurtful most uh, people without who are not narcissistic abusers will be slightly hurt maybe be a little bit angry but generally try to work through the issue the narcissistic parent will be triggered and will become abusive in order to shut that child down now the point is we have to remember with a narcissist is you are an object in their world. Their child is even an object in their world. You are that at their bidding, their behest. Um, you are there to give them their narcissistic fuel supply. So in the case of the parent and the child, and we're talking young child, the parent will then try to um, bring the child back in line, uh, annihilate the child somehow, stifle it because you're being perceived as a threat. Now, the narcissist can take this too far and can become extremely abusive and use manipulative tactics as well. So there can be getting the child to feel sorry for them, maybe tears and silence for a few days, they'll stonewall the child, um, there'll be word salad given to the child if maybe the child's a bit older and go, hang on, your rules don't make sense. You know, like a bit like maybe teenagers do, your, your rules don't make sense, I don't understand this, one minute you're saying this, now you're saying that, now I've got to do this, this doesn't seem very fair, bang, 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 bang and you get word salad stonewalling and abuse and if you uh, and if the child is perceived as a threat to the narcissistic parent's sense of self they will like any threat try to annihilate it try to destroy it try to get rid of it and actually direct criticism can be also perceived as a threat which would is more likely to come from like a teenager etc etc the other way that you're perceived as a threat um, by the narcissistic parent is through your own achievements, talents, attributes, um, characteristics, and even aesthetics. 
So, and I've seen this one quite a lot. It's quite sad and it's quite pitiful. Um, but I've seen narcissistic parents be extremely threatened by their child's or their daughter's beauty. Normally it's, it's along the female line. So their daughter's beauty or their son's so handsome. Uh, you know, my, my son's much more good looking than I am, etc, etc. He get or he gets more women than I do as we as we get older. Um, all sorts of stuff, but also with talents um, in sport, the arts, um, music, whatever it may be, job. I've seen it happen where the child is earning, grows up and begins to earn more money than the parent. Now, what we have to separate here is the difference between a narcissistic, abusive response to that and the response from a parent who is not too happy with their life and hasn't sorted out a lot of their shit. Um, and now all of a sudden they're being given a mirror. And the, the line is quite fine, but the abuse comes from, but the, the, the crossover is when it's narcissistic abuse. So when it's narcissistic rage, when there's the same things as you get in all the other relationships with a narcissist, when it's rage, when there's stonewalling, word salad, manipulation, um, trying to get sympathy, anything to get you feeding them that narcissistic supply. And believe it or not, narcissistic parents will do that to children as well. So let's bring it back down so to, to young children. So you have um, this child and a narcissistic parent. Now, the easiest way to prevent, well, not the easiest way, but one way that the child can prevent narcissistic abuse going much further and happening again is to become everything that that parent wants them to become. So wear the clothes that, they, that you're told to wear, do the things, speak when spoken to, look like them, behave like them, all of them. Because the ultimate compliment to a narcissist is to have someone who is exactly the same as them who idolizes them. It's that kind of looking into the mirror thing gone very, very twisted and warped. Uh, but that is exactly what's happening, okay? Now, from the child's point of view, this is the safest way to be. Um, at a sacrifice of developing their uh, individuality, developing themselves. Now, what can happen, and often does happen later on in life when that child grows up, is they have no sense of self. They have no identity. Their identity, they, they, they had this arrested development on their sense of self because the safest way to be was to be exactly um, the same as the parent and to be uh, shaped by that parent. And like I said, so it's a sacrifice of individuality. That's one reaction. And that's, that's devastating um, as an adult. It's devastating on an individual because the individual is hollow and the individual is always having to keep up and always having to pay homage to said narcissistic parent. The second way is to seek is to seek some kind of equilibrium whilst trying to maintain some kind of justice and, and sense of self. So the child may well react in a way that most of the time they conform and then occasionally they object and then that escalates and then the child will say something like, I don't like that, da 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 um, and this narcissistic abuse happens, the rage, the getting them to feel sorry for themselves, for sorry for them, the stonewalling, tears, silence, not feeding children, all sorts of stuff I've seen and come across. Um, setting the child up to fail. Um, I don't want to get into the, all the different types of abuse, but so this is what's happened. Most of it's emotional and mental. That child will often be held at arm's length by the parent because that child's risk because they're slightly unpredictable and can show you up in public and a narcissist does not want to be shown up in public. The child who is the miniature version is safe, they can, they can be included in all the social stuff, this child cannot. So you'll often find one child is slightly ostracized on the fringes, excuses made for, pushed out to a point but not fully. And then I mentioned a third way, which was um, the complete uh, subservience to the um, parent, uh, which is in many ways, it's a little bit like, oh, I wouldn't say Cinderella, but it's going along those lines. So it's, it's a little bit like the first, the first approach that 
that a child can take, which is to become everything that they want. The other one is to be subservient, because don't forget that the narcissist needs that supply of fuel, needs that. Now they like people who push them up and have them on a pedestal, and they like to trample over people as well. So if it, if, if it, sorry, if a narcissistic parent can trample over their child, they will do because the child will just keep working harder and harder to try to please. So there is still a narcissistic supply being fed. Um, so this is the kind of slave child. This is the um, child who is quiet, subservient, doesn't have any opinions, doesn't have, you know, they're almost inert um, and they're very, very anxious and they're always on the edge of something. You will see them around. They look like um, and I, again, I say this quite loosely, but they look like typical uh, children who are abused. They are on edge and afraid of the world. This is the, this is the thing with some of the other stuff. Like with the first approach, that child can look actually quite healthy. They'll probably perform quite well um, in school and in college and in work. They'll probably look quite nice. Uh, they'll be well dressed. They'll be well fed. They'll look after themselves to a point because this is a mirror image of the omnipotent wonderful amazing narcissistic parent the second child will be a bit of a mix um, between kind of what you'd expect from healthy children um, and will also be probably have some anxiety issues and the third reaction or way to deal with the narcissistic parent is you will have this child who is turning away from the world because the world is quite, and you can kind of see that in uh, children who are sexually abused by a parent or a step parent. You kind of see that turning away from the world, that not wanting to reveal the big secrets, um, but being very wary and very aware of what the parent's doing. It's very, very sad and very sinister. And again, I'll leave that for another video. The, the last way is the kind of dissociation, which is the complete opposite. So it's this kind of complete numbness. This child is not on. This child is not emotionally on. Their emotional regulation has come to a complete stop. They are numb. They're almost at the point of dissociation. They're on the verge from it. And as an adult, you'll see the same thing. If there's something hostile coming their way, they'll dissociate. So, um, those are the four kind of main ways in which a child will develop in reaction to having a narcissistic abusive parent. Um, I'll leave this as video number one if, uh, and we'll move on in a second video into, uh, yeah, maybe how this, how this plays out. Um, so, so those are the those are the four approaches, the four umbrella approaches, if you like. And now, again, there's so many variables within family and individuals as to what these look like. But those are the, like I say, those are the four kind of main routes that the child will take in order to be able to cope with its their environment. Um, as an adult, what's the fallout from this? Well, like I said, the, the approach number one, the becoming the miniature version, there is no sense of self, absolutely not. That's been sacrificed, that was arrested a long time ago. So there's no sense of self, which can collapse later on down the line. It's as fragile as the shell around the parent, and they have to keep it up all the time. The second approach will probably leave the child at some point as an adult, either going through all the problems of leaving the, the, fa the parent or the family in total. Um, my narcissists are very manipulative and being able to triangulate family against you, um, uh, against the perceived threat, which, which may be their own child. So it will be on the fringes, there'll be the bad one, the black sheep, the scapegoat, etc, etc, etc. And the th the third one, they will, be, they will probably stay in that life of servitude and maybe well fall into further abusive relationships. In fact, with all the, the approaches, if you have an abusive parent, you're likely to pick an abusive partner. So probably, uh, so most children from abusive, narcissistic abusive parents will pick abusive partners. Uh, probably narcissistic partners. So there'll be further life of servitude um, and submission and groveling and it's an abuse and the last one is the, the dissociation may well escalate into a complete emotional switch off as a person 
um, a bit of a doormat, maybe. Um, this kind of blank, it's very extreme scenario and quite not, doesn't happen very much, quite rare. But this kind of, uh, you're a ghost wandering through the world as an adult. Um, so like I say, there are many variables, but it's a brief overview. I know um, I'd like to go more in depth, but I'd be here for hours. Um, and uh, there are many, many side shoots to go down. So I hope that helps. I would do another video on the evolution of a narcissist and how they come about, um, which I'll put in the description below. It's important to understand how they come about. Um, and in the meantime, please take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon. Adios.